What's going on, guys? Welcome back to 100% Chelsea and welcome to your opposition preview of Chelsea versus Crystal Palace at the weekend. I'm joined by the man himself, one of Crystal Palace's finest YouTubers, or as he likes to claim. Uh, I have known this man for many, many years. So uh, welcome, Mr. Oliver Thomas. How are you, my friend? Yeah, I'm not bad. I'm not bad. How are you? Well, I'm not too bad, mate. You know, undefeated this season. Obviously, Derby kind of scored a couple of goals for us yesterday to make sure that uh, we got through in the Carabao Cup. I saw you uh, on Snapchat basically sat on your own in uh, Middlesbrough. How was that? Uh, miserable. Um, it was probably the worst away I've ever done. We, I went by myself basically to get some, just to get some content really. Um, because obviously I live up north, don't get to see Palace play live near here very often. So I thought I'd take the opportunity, sacrifice my Halloween. We lost one nil, we played shit and it was cold. Other than that, it was great. Okay, I mean, that's, um, I guess the journey was easy for you. I guess, I guess that was technically what the the... So nice at the ground, nice burger, nice chips as well. Is this, is this, is that the highlight of, of Middlesbrough? Yeah, absolutely. Okay, fair enough. Well, we'll, we'll glaze over that. And we'll, we'll, speaking of you losing, uh, let's talk about your form this season. You guys have been a bit up and down. You've not been great, have you, after no. you, know, you were singing Roy's praises last year. And obviously during the summer, banging on about it because uh, we basically live like 10 minutes away from each other. So, you mm. know, you, you just wouldn't shut up about Roy Hodgson. But uh, I would have <laughs> proved right, actually, about Roy Hodgson. Yeah. The, um, yeah, the thing is... At the end of last season, we had a formula that worked. And obviously, we've lost a couple of players. We lost Kabai, which was, in my opinion, a massive loss. Losing on a free to some random Saudi Arabian club was it was a bit of a kick in the teeth. And then, obviously, Loftus-Cheek uh, not coming back to us. And, like, we do miss him. Like, that's undeniable. Um, but it just seems that we just haven't been playing the same this season. Like, we we don't have the same... We play different shape every week. We, Roy, I, in my opinion, Roy has still not played the best starting eleven yet this season. In my opinion, um, it just seems that he doesn't really know his best team, and it's so clear that's the case. Like it's weird because against Arsenal, we were so good, played so well, could have easily beaten them. But then we play Southampton at home, and we were lucky to lose two 0 And Southampton are awful. Like they were awful, but we were just even worse. And it's just bizarre. I don't really understand what what he's thinking at the moment. The, the substitution things annoy me against Everton. We, it wasn't working. We were lucky to still be at nil-nil. Roy didn't make a change at the 91st minute and we lost 2 nil. And it was like, he just can't react to game situations. And it's so frustrating because we've seen us, the, I've seen us play the best football I've ever seen Palace play under Roy at times. But at times he is just so clueless. Like It's just such a weird, a weird situation because I know he's got it in him and it's such simple things he needs to change, but he just refuses to do it. It's really bizarre. Mm. I mean, that does sound a lot like Roy Hodgson to me, but I mean, it's a case of, you know, you, you've got some key players that are saying, you've missed Loftus-Cheek, you've missed Johan Kabayad, but we've got to talk about a man which I wanted all summer at Chelsea, when everyone's banging on about a right winger, I wanted him, Wilfred Zahar. Now, obviously, he's he's played okay so far, this season, but the big story about him is obviously the, the diving scandal. I say diving with quotations, because you know, <laughs> he's, uh, it, I, I, there has been times where he has, but he's no Victor Moses, let's put it that way. Yeah. Um, <laughs> what, what what's happening with him? What, what what's is he is he is he good to play? Is he is he definitely well, something that we should, we should look out for? He's um he's been it's been clear this season that he's not one hundred percent fit. Um, he he missed a couple of games for injury and then he came back from the international break. wasn't fit. We played him anyway against Everton. He just clearly was not in the right state to play. Still won a penalty to be fair. Um, it's hard for him because he's obviously our best player by a mile, and I wouldn't expect that to be any different, but. Going forward, we literally have nothing else. Like Townsend, his output is awful. I, I told you the other day, he, Chris Smalling has more goals and assists than ta- than Townsend since the beginning of last season, and oh, the beginning of two seasons ago. And Smalling has played thirty four less games, and he's a centre back. More importantly, Townsend plays week in, week out, sometimes up front, and his output is just not good enough. We don't have a proper. Str- what do you say? Is he getting a goal scoring opportunity though? That's what I remember. That's the style of people yeah. experience me. <coughs> Lawrence bangs on about. <laughs> um, no, not really. Like he's just such a nothing player. But it's a great shift in, and I love him. He's like he's a valuable team player, but he doesn't do his job. It's it's kind of hard to explain. But he, you can never doubt his work rate. Never doubt his commitment. And he's not bad, but he he's his final ball is not good enough. We don't have a proper striker. Like it speaks volumes that we're missing Ben Teke. Bear in mind he scored three goals last season. We're actually missing him. That's how bad our other striking options are. We've got Jordan Knight from Swansea, who is just awful. Um 
it, apart from Wolf, there's not much. Honestly, if I was you, I'd be worrying about our defence more than our attack because our back four is, in my opinion, one of the best outside the top six on paper. We've got, obviously, Patrick Van Aanholt left back, established Premier League left back these days, in my opinion. So good going forward, quick. Not, like Wingers tend not to get the better of him. Tompkins and Sacco have got two very good experienced centre-halves. And in Wan-Bissaka, we've got an absolute revelation at yeah. right back. I saw a stat today where apparently he's got like the most tackles yeah. in the top five it, leagues. It, it, was, it was like he's attempted 45 tackles and he's completed 42 of them. And he's the only player to have attempted over 40 tackles and missed less than 10 and he's missed three, which is just, that is ridiculous. That is honestly ridiculous. Like up against Hazard, I'm so intrigued to see how we get on because obviously Hazard's a fantastic player. But one-on-one in terms of, Hazard versus wan in a who can get around him. I haven't seen anyone get around wan yet. Mane, Sanchez, Son, Martial, no one has got the better of him yet. So I'm interested to see how Hazard will get on. That's, that's actually quite interesting because I, I, yeah. I, I've, I will, again, me and Ollie yeah. have a little conversation. We like to call each other and have nice big yeah. catch-ups because, you know, we're mates. That's what fans yeah. do. Uh, <laughs> but as the case of, um, we were talking about wan the other day, and you think that Chelsea are going to get a hold of him in the future. Yeah. I do because obviously uh, I keep an eye out for other Premier League teams. Obviously, and you look at you look at the big teams at the moment. Like they've all got quite good right back options, maybe with the exception of United. But they've got that Diego Dalot guy who they're convinced is going to be like the next big thing. Um, you look at Chelsea. Obviously, Moses is past it, or oh, he's never really a right back in the first place. To be honest, let's be let's no, be honest. Um, As you've always said, is a great great player. Everyone says he's a great player, but he's not. A, I don't think he's. I don't think he's going to be the type of player. You could, obviously, he's old. First of all, he's he, getting on. How old is he now? Twenty-eight, twenty-nine. Oh, okay. No. He's younger than I thought. To be fair, but even then, <laughs> Wan Bissaka's Wan Bissaka's what twenty. So, like, he's got massive age advantage on him. I think he's probably a bit more dynamic than Aspilicueta is. But obviously, I, I, I don't know what you think, but I get the impression that Aspilicueta is the type of player who would like never lose his place in the Chelsea team unless, like, like in under normal circumstances, you're not just going to drop him. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, no, I th- to be honest, I think Aspilicueta has been playing quite well. At right, like, he came on yesterday and there's the game before as well against Burnley. He was actually motoring up and down that right-hand side. So he's, I think he's finally getting to grips with with what that position is again. Obviously, that's what we bought him for originally. But I think, you know, as he's got older, he's got his defensive capabilities got more and he's not had to move as much. Um, I don't know, he might have lost a yard of pace and he's, he's got it back. I, I don't know. It just it just seems, he just seems to be okay there now. Um but I think one one Basaka. I mean, to be honest, I haven't watched enough of him to actually go out and say I think he's an amazing player. But the statistics, uh, this is a little statistics you're throwing at me. Um, and obviously, they talk about Mane, Sanchez, Martial. Uh, obviously, you've not played City yet, have you? No. Uh, okay, so he's yet, to, know, he's yet we, to play. He's yet to play City. So interesting to see how he gets on there. Yeah. But I don't doubt him for one second. Like, Seriously, it's, you're that confident. The, the, the thing is as well, so again, I saw a stat about this because now he's kind of, we've obviously had a few games live on TV and he's really impressed. It was since he started playing or since the start of the season or since he made his debut, he's got, um, in terms of fullbacks, most duels won, um, like second most tackles completed and most take-ons completed. So it shows that he's not just got a defensive stability, he can go forward as well. His crossing isn't great. But because he used to be a winger, he does just glide past people a lot of the time. Mm. Um, and his legs, like, his legs are just ridiculously long. Like, apparently they call him Daddy Long Legs at Palace. Like, it, you think you're around him and he just sticks a leg out and gets a toe on it. Like, it's just, it's ridiculous. Like, as you said, you'll see on Sunday, he is worth getting excited about. I think, bold claim, obviously him and Trent Alexander-Arnold are the same age. I think he's better than Trent Alexander-Arnold, personally. Ooh, ho, ho, you're going to piss off a few people with that. I do. I do. Oh dear! Did you, is he? Is he? Is a question. Does he use Snapchat and does he chat up seven months for you? <laughs> See that, ladies. That is that is the main thing that Wamasaka has on Trent. He doesn't do that, as far as I'm aware. <laughs> Obviously, I don't know what goes on behind closed doors. Um, but, I, you know, I think either. Yeah, Trent's um, Trent's a great crosser of the ball. I like in terms of end product, he's much better than Wamasaka. But I do genuinely believe in every other aspect, Wamasaka better. Would you? Would you? Would you say that to Payjack? Yeah, I'd I'd say I'd back that. You back that against Chris because I this this man is like a a tactical and statistical genius. So yeah. I'd like I'd like to see that you versus Chris Page. I mean, when are you next playing Liverpool? 
Uh, oh, not for a while. We played them for our start of the season. So. Oh, oh, God. Oh, come on. We spoke, we spoke about this. He needs to be getting these collabs sorted, mate. I will I will message him. All I'll do is I'll message him and be like, wan is better than Alexander-Arnold. He'll be like, right, get me, get me on the channel I'm, now. I'm, I'm going to send that this clip. I'm going to cut it out and go, Chris, you might need to have words with him, mate. Because I mean, for it. I think, right, okay, here's a question. Do you think that wan hasn't been noticed because he's at Palace? Yeah, absolutely. Like, wan is not a spectacular right back. He's not gonna, he's not gonna, you know, burn a full back and get him behind and whip crosses in him and do stuff like that. But what he does is, you, he will not get beaten by his man on a one v one when it's him against his winger. He does not lose. But the thing is that flies under the radar, especially if we're still losing to these good teams. So against Liverpool, for example, he had a great game, um, but he we lost two 0 So. It kind of goes like, oh, well, we can't play that well. Palace lost 2-0. But he was best player on the pitch that day, in my opinion. Um, like, he's not... It, it's really hard to describe it. it. He's just so, so solid. Um, and I think it's the fact that he's not like... He's not necessarily a typical marauding wing-back that he doesn't get the attention necessarily. Like, I think Van Anholt probably gets more attention... Or until recently, has got more attention than he had when when Wan Bissaka is much better. Mm. Oh, okay. Well, I mean, it's an interesting claim. I mean, people leave your thoughts down in the comment section below. Wan Bissaka or Trent Alexander Arnold. But we've spoken about your key man, the man you're hyping about. We've spoken about Wilfred Zaha and everyone, obviously, in the Premier League. I'd consider him the best player outside the top six uh, as an attacker. Correct. Uh, so, so, so it was either that or, or, or you know, Marco and out of it. And then, you know, it's, it's, it's a little bit of a juggle. Yeah. Um, but I think, yeah, I consider him the best player outside the top six. Um, one player I'd like to talk about as well. Because I think he's severely underrated. And I think the midfield battle is going to be very important this week. Obviously, we've got the likes of, well, I think I don't think Kovacic will start. But, you know, we've got Ross Barker playing well at the minute. You know, we've got Jorginho, we'll have Kante. Uh, obviously, like I've said, you, you, we've got a very deep midfield. You know, we, this is something we've been crying out for mm-hmm. years. The man in the middle for you, Luka Milivojevic, mm-hmm. how good is he? He is um, basically, so little story time. We sold Mile Jednak, who was our captain, leader, legend of the club, and we just never replaced him. This was like three seasons ago. Luca came in and has plugged that gap very well. Last season, he was absolutely brilliant. Um, not just his defensive work. He's, 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 the, the chart goes he comes from Serbia or fucking Murdia. Like, that is the type of player he is. He's, he's just rock hard, like, doesn't let anything get around him. Obviously, penalty taker, he missed against Everton, but he's clinical from the spot normally. Like, two great penalties against Arsenal. Um, this season, he hasn't really lived up to how he played last season. I think he's missing Kabai because Kabai got through a lot of work in that midfield. Um, and Roy kind of likes playing 4-4-2. And I think you've got to be a very, very good midfielder to, in, to play 4-4-2 in the Premier League and hold your own. I think he's struggled a bit this season. Since we played three in midfield, he's got a lot better. We, like, he looks a lot more solid. And I think he needs legs around him a lot of the time. But him playing with Kiate has worked really well. And... I think it's a matter of time before he comes back into his own. He is without him in our midfield, we massively struggle, and it's so clear whenever we play. Mm. I mean, I, I, I like him a lot. I think he's he's a very solid player, and oh, he does it all the time. And obviously, the the chant which you're saying, if that is true, it's going to be a very good <laughs> battle this week. Yeah. Um, but one more thing before we go on score predictions. Uh, actually, now we'll go through a couple more. Actually, so I've got my notes in front of me. I completely missed something. Um, this I, I asked Liam this uh, after the Burnley game. And it's a case, of obviously, you're saying you guys aren't playing as good as you could be uh, over the over the, you know this season. In terms of a relegation battle, do you feel that you're going to be comfortable? Do you think you know there's, there's definitely three teams worse than you that will go down, or is it a case of it could be a tough battle for you guys this season? Um, realistically, I'm not worried at the moment. I know that first of all, on paper. Our team is m- more than good enough to stay up. If not, we should be finishing top half. Like, that's evident. I think as well, whilst we haven't been great this season, we're still 14th. And I think there are teams below us who are far worse and are far more to worry about. Having said that, we haven't beaten those teams. So Newcastle, I think, are in trouble. Didn't beat them, drew 0-0. Southampton, I think they're in trouble. Lost 2-0 to them. It's, it's annoying, but it's just you come to expect it with Palace. We, we're... First half of the season, we are serial underperformers. We never, ever play as well as we should. And it will be around Christmas, there'll be a crisis. January and February, something will change, whether that be players coming in, players going, manager coming in. 
And then end of the season, we'll put it together, run a form, we'll stay up. It happens every single year and I expect the same thing to happen this year. Um, so yeah, I mean, if someone said to me right now, do you think we'll go down? I'd say absolutely not. Might we be in a battle? Yeah, points will be in a relegation battle, but I don't think there'll be any real cause because they're not compared to that last season, for example. Mm. I mean, yeah, I think that's that's, that's fair enough because I, 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 personally, the squad you have on paper for me is a, is a top half team. Oh, you know, absolutely. You, and it's a case of you guys should really be pushing on. Um, and the fact that, again, like this, I mean, you're saying this happens every season. Mm. I think the same thing happened with Stoke. I think Stoke were a side of, not the last year, maybe on the cusp the year before, but before that, their side that were very solid. They were developing and they needed to be pushing forward, but they didn't and they suffered for it. Um, and I think it's a case that Palace needs to do the same. But um, one thing I'll ask you, can you give me uh, your 11 that you think will start and your score prediction, please? Okay, well, the 11 is very hard to predict. We change our team every week. If I had to predict what he's going to do, I don't think he'll change much from the Arsenal game. So that'll be uh, Hennessy in goal, back four of Wan Bissaka, Tompkins, Sacco, Van Anholt. In midfield, I think it'll be um, Luka Milivojevic, Kiate, and James MacArthur. Maybe, hopefully, Max Meyer instead of MacArthur, but probably not. And then I imagine a front three of um, Townsend, Ayu and Zaha. Maybe Sorloth instead of Ayu, but yeah, prob- that, probably unchanged from last week, I would imagine. OK, well, that's, uh, that's fair enough. And uh, school prediction then, mate? Um, honestly, guys, it's so hard to say because you never know what Palace is going to turn up. Um, obviously, we've got, a, we've got a good record against Chelsea in recent years, but I feel like you're a different animal this year. So I'll probably go... I reckon a 2-0, 2-0 Chelsea, a fairly comfortable 2-0 Chelsea. <laughs> I, don't, I don't like that. That makes me feel nervous. <laughs> I think it was every time, even when we're playing well, Palace seems to come to Chelsea and just beat us. This it's is very like, true. We do love to play Chelsea recently, which I do like. It's nice to have a little, uh, little no, something to look forward to and play you. But um, yeah, I, I'm not confident this time around. I can't lie. Okay, well, listen, guys, that was Ollie's thoughts from Talk Crystal Palace. Obviously, make sure you head across there for my preview of the game as well. Uh, that will be these. We're going to read this is recorded on Thursday. So, if anything changes in the press conferences, obviously, you know, don't lynch us. Uh, but other than that, uh, listen, make sure you head across there. Subscribe to Anderson Chelsea. Ollie, thank you for coming on. Uh, thank you very much for having me. No worries, mate. All, all social media links are down in the description for both of us, obviously. So, make sure you go see all of that. Head across to TCP. Make sure you see what I have to say about Chelsea. And uh, we'll see you later. Take care.